Hey everybody, before the show starts, log on to musicmoneymakeover.com forward slash shop to download all my books and free guides. And while you're there, click on the book a call tab to book a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me to get all your music business questions solved. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham and on this episode we're talking about how to start an LLC for music artists and for record labels. Now, before we jump into this thing, let me explain. We are going to start with the one company, one LLC, like we always talk about on this channel, like I've talked about in my books, like I've talked about to countless others in any way, shape, form, or fashion. What you will see today is a typical company structure after you grow yourself out of that single LLC. Many of, many of you all may have not seen this before, but I want to give you an advanced down the road picture of what your operation will look like later down the line when you start making heavy amounts of cash flow. All right? Because everybody that watches my channel, I'm telling you, I'm looking for somebody to come back and say, yo, I watched the Music Money Makeover show. It helped me get to where I am. And because of this, and this guy, Casey Graham, he helped me get here. Now, you will need to watch Copyright Explained. But before we get there, if you want to donate to the channel, you can do so right over here. And if you want to skip Copyright Explained because you got it by this point, you can do so right down below. All right, without further ado, let's jump into Copyright Explained. Copyright, the sole right which an author has in their own original literary compositions. The exclusive right of an author to print, publish, and then their own literary works for their own benefit. Now, of course, there are two main rights of copy that the music industry operates and revolves around, and that's the masters and the publishing. And the masters is referred to as the sound recording copyright. Sound recordings as in records, masters, phonogram, or the audio recording file, i.e. the WAVE, MP3, AIFF, of the composition and or song. Now you can collect your master recording royalties or the proceeds due from the sale and streaming of the master recording via your distributor like TuneCore DistroKid and if you have a major label deal then it's them. All right? Now you can also collect the performance royalties via the master sound recording via Sound Exchange and PPL over in the UK. Sound Exchange is based here in America and if you are outside of America, any other organization that collects these sound recording performance royalties are referred to as neighboring rights. Now, publishing is referred to as a performing arts copyright here in America. Okay, performing arts as in the composition, sheet, music, MIDI files, publishing, or song to be performed. You can collect the performance royalties for the composition via BMI, CSAC, ASCAP here in America, and PRS over in the UK, and other countries have their own performing rights organization as well to collect those royalties for you. All right, now... You can collect the mechanical royalties due from the composition via Harry Fox, Music Reports, and the Mechanical Licensing Collective here in America. You can also collect your mechanical royalties over in the UK from MCPS. So now, Lyric Fine right here. You can get your lyric display royalties from Lyric Fine and Music Match. But that's that. Let's go through the six rights of copyright to be exercised to the fullest extent of the United States Code under Title 17, and that's the right to reproduce. The right to reproduce the copyrighted work in copies or phono records, physical or digital format. The right to prepare derivative works. The right to prepare derivative works based upon the copyrighted work. The right to distribute. The right to distribute copies or phono records of the copyrighted work to the public by sale or other transfer of ownership or by rental, lease, or lending. And then we have the right to public performance, the right to perform the copyrighted work publicly, the right to public display, the right to display the copyrighted work publicly, and the right to digital performance, and that's the right to digital audio transmission performance. Okay, everybody, thank you for watching Copyright Explained. This is gonna help you in today's video. All right, if you wanna text me, 470-291-5767 is the number, okay? Please, Click the link. It is me. It says Superphone. I'm using Ryan Leslie Superphone for sure because that's how I like to keep it funky. You know what I mean? And click the link and add yourself to the phone because if you don't, I'm definitely not going to respond to you unless it's like, oh my God, you got to. All right? This is me. This is my number. 
All right, so I can I can know who it is. I don't know. I can't keep in contact with all of you all. So I need you to add yourself to the phone so that I know who I'm speaking with. All right. Anyway, got that out the way. We're going to break this structure down. Hopefully I don't blow your mind with all of this stuff. But here we go. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the inside of the computer. OK, so we're going to make this preface really quickly. And I just also want to explain that. In today's video, uh, I'm going to explain building your business structure from the beginning, starting with one LLC, and then we're going to build it to this behemoth entertainment company when you're making millions of dollars because we don't want any thousandaires. We want millionaires, and some you can take this structure and be a billionaire, all right? But you, you, this is we're going from we're going from start to what I perceive as your finish or your next step, if you will. So here's what you're going to need to accomplish these tasks. Now, this is just a small list of what you're going to need. This is not everything. Of course, you know this channel is overview. There's a lot of things you have to do to fill in the blanks here, but check it out. You're going to need a business bank account to start with, but eventually you will need several, and that goes for everything on this list. You're going to start with one LLC and one EIN number, but eventually you're going to need an accountant, all right? You're eventually going to need a corporate attorney, and you will eventually more then likely eventually need the tax attorney and probably the tax attorney and accountant at accountant first. And then you're going to need that corporate attorney. All right. But you're going to need all of these and you're going to definitely need multiple amounts of these. So without lingering on that, let's keep going. Now, check it out. In this book, I talk about being on your way to becoming investable. And today I will expound upon it. OK, so I forgot, I think it's after the B2B, the business to business transaction, I mentioned this statement. And that's what we're going to get to in today's video. We're going to explore this statement and see what it looks like on the other end. Okay. Um, I got a few more videos coming up where I talk about, you know, you don't want to take a loan on the front end. A lot of you all want to get your Spotify stream super fast. You want to get the money right up front and you end up maxing out basically your credit card. You max out any potential equity in your creativity that you could possibly have. And I know that's a lot of business jargon I just spewed at you. But you take so much money up front and you max yourself out and you have nothing left for people to invest in because you're maxed out by other companies now. Uh, I'm going to expound upon this statement today. And if you don't have this guide, go pick it up on musicmoneymakeover.com. There's a lot of good stuff in this book. It's just 10 books. You know, I don't charge, uh, it's 10 bucks. I don't charge a lot for the information. Uh, I just want to get it out to musicians and everything like that. So here we go. So this is what I see as a ultimate setup. You have a parent slash umbrella company that handles all of your other LLCs of your entire entertainment conglomerate, if you will. All right. So you have your record company, LLC, your publishing company, LLC, your touring company, LLC, your merchandise company, LLC, and your brand endorsement company, LLC. And they all take separate checks and cash flow is coming in and out of this. This is an ultimate setup. Now, this is where now as a beginner, you won't start here. This is for your more seasoned business people in this entertainment industry. If you just have one LLC started, don't stash all of these companies underneath one LLC. You're going to put yourself in a lot of tax trouble with that. OK, so you want to break this stuff out. So let's keep rolling. I won't confuse you at the beginning. We'll just develop it later down in the video. So here we go. Now, check it out. This is the ultimate startup. Instead of those LLCs that were in the previous slide, you see I have a bunch of DBAs. And that's just for each new one that you come up with, eventually you're going to start LLCs. But for each new one, as they start to unfold, maybe start them as DBAs to start with. So you have your one LLC and you have a bunch of DBAs so you can open up bank accounts and do business under these DBAs without paying all the LLC fees to start with. Um, so that's another idea you can have there. But let's let's break it down from the from the beginning. Now, this is where most of you all start. This is where most of you all call me or I don't know. I don't know why y'all call that number. It clearly says text. But anyway, this is where most of you all text me or message me saying, hey, I just got my LLC. What do I do next? Well, for you, the record company is the first company that you will start with nine times out of 10. OK, it will also more than likely be the first LLC you create, which is most of you, because you want to protect the assets 
and operations of the company from your personal assets. Now, I need to do another video on the difference between assets and operations, but just real quickly, assets are your copyrights and the equipment that you use at the record company to create the copyrights. And then the operation is the act of creating the copyrights and the act of promoting the copyrights. Assets are copyrights and operations are is the act of creating and promoting. OK, and the assets are the tools that you use to create and then the final product. OK, so you understand that. All right. So uh, of the company from your personal assets. OK, uh, and here we go. And, and I'll explain personal assets later in the video as well. OK, so now here is the second ideal starting position from from the parent company. So some of you will just start with the record company like ABC Records LLC. It'll be titled that and, you know, it's a record company. Others who are more experienced will say, hey, let's call it ABC, the ABC company, LLC. Notice how I didn't say ABC Records, but I said the ABC company, right? So there's a difference in names. Names give off signals, okay? So starting from the parent company is an option chosen by more experienced music entrepreneurs simply because they already have a more defined roadmap of how they want to design their company. Now, choosing a name without the ending records, publishing, entertainment, etc., etc., is the best because the ending clearly gives away to the IRS and to other companies, I'm just saying, and other people who are lurking and looking. It clearly gives away what type of business the company is and what types it will hold and represent. And it gives it away to the bank, too. The bank is looking when you're opening that first bank account for the business. Like, what kind of company is this? Right. And so you could say, hey, this is a parent umbrella holding company. All right. Or you could say, hey, this is a record company. And sorry about the phone. That's somebody texting me on the super phone. OK. Uh, and so uh, the bank will, will want to know what type of company you have. And they will want to know what type of company you have if you have a record company, too. But that's clearly defined as what it says. Over here, it's not. It's just a holding company. They have different tax incentives and structures for them. Okay, there are other codes that I need to talk about at a later date that come along with those companies outside of the EIN number. Some of you know this because we've had we've discussed this on calls, but I don't want to ramble on. So let's keep going. Keep your names clean when you're doing a parent company. Don't call it parent company records. No, no, no. That's not a no. All right. So here's step number two. Here's your next step. If you just created the LLC for the record company, you got to have a publishing company at some point. And then you might be prompted to do this if you're a record company that signs an artist and you take a portion of their publishing and you go and register your publishing at BMI or ASCAP. They may say or you may decide or they may prompt you or push you in the direction of creating a DBA, a doing business as which in case you will put the DBA inside of the record company LLC. So if it's record company LLC, it may say record company publishing DBA. All right. But record company LLC is the main house. You can clearly start to see where you develop some of some parent company structure. Let's read this. OK, because you started with the record company, you more than likely stashed your publishing business in there as well. I'm sure you did. OK. To keep things simple, while your publishing company is growing, make the publishing company a DBA, a doing business as. This will save on expenses for the bookkeeping, yearly filings, operating agreement costs, and headaches from maintaining it all. Because usually at this point, when you do the DBA, because you might assign the artist right after you created the LLC, you don't have a lot of cash flow yet. So you don't need another LLC with more operating agreements and more stuff you got to pay for. Just make a DBA and wait for the cash flow to come in. And then turn this DBA into an LLC later down the line. So let's keep going. Now, let's say if you did the parent company step, what you want to do is choosing the parent company option is amazing. For the future, you can choose to use DBAs to tack on other businesses as you grow. But you will eventually want to turn them into LLCs. At this point, add the record company and publishing DBAs in. So what could happen here? Now, this is advanced. We're going to advance business and tax structure, but I'm just bringing it out. You got your umbrella company. All right. It has interest in these two companies. These two companies pays profits, a share of profits to the parent company. OK. 
All right. And they're housed in the parent company. The record company and the publishing company can continue to do business on their own, but they must pay a portion to the parent company. OK, you see, I'm pretty sure you're starting to get how this works. So let's say if the parent company owns 50 percent of these two companies right here, the profits after their expenses, these two companies will pay this parent company 50 percent. OK, so then uh, at this point, yeah, adding the record company and publishing DBAs in this is your, your starting point. So you will have a DBA. All your contracts will be done under the record company as a DBA and the publishing company. It will be done under that. Now, when the cash starts to roll in under this structure, you will change those to LLCs. OK, now, clearly, I know I clearly I know you all will have a lot of questions, but but um, just drop them below. OK, now check this out. An LLC is a just so if you don't know. People throw around LLCs. Oh, I got to get one. I got to get one to start my company. No, you don't. You could start with the DBA and use your social security number and continue or continue on as a sole proprietor. But this is why you want an LLC. OK, LLC is for asset protection. Your personal assets like your house, even though a car is technically not an asset to most people, even though a car is not a an asset. To most people, it is, or most musicians, anything that helps them keep operating your company is an asset, okay? Stocks per that you own under your name, anything, any investments that you have purchased and that you own is an asset to you. Therefore, when you sign up to do a record company and you say, I'm going to do one, we need an LLC because we want to protect our house, our car, our investments, Whatever, if something goes wrong with the LLC or the record label. So an LLC is a type of company structure that keeps all liability for actions done by the company in the company so that you will not be personally liable, but the company will be. OK, so as long as you understand that. Hey, man, you didn't live up to the agreement we had. You said yada, 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 yada. I'm suing you. OK, well, you can't sue you. You have to sue the LLC, Mr. Disgruntled Person, because we had a contract under the LLC and me and you together didn't have a contract. OK, so that's how the LLC works. It protects your personal assets, but. If, let's go to the next slide, a lot of your income comes from the LLC to help you out personally, you are going to be worried at this point. So not so fast. If your LLC is your main source of income, it could be a sad day for you. If you do business in and out of your name or you don't have a charging protection order styled LLC, excuse me, that should be that should just say a charging protection LLC, things may not be so great when situations arise. All right, check this out. Now, let's say this Mr. Disgruntled person says, hey, I'm suing you, right? Because you, we had an argument and I know you have a lot of money and you punched me in the face and now I'm mad, right? Well, they signed an agreement with your LLC but their gripes are with you personally. This is how the charging protection order works. All right. He's going to charge you. And OK, but the protection order, what will happen with this is this will allow your LLC to not be affected. So if he goes after you because you personally punched him, they cannot go into the LLC. Now, I know I have a green check mark there and this is how it works. I'm going to sue you personally. And then the charging protection order prevents them from getting into the record label. OK. All right. That's how that works. But if they have to sue the record label for things that happen in there and that's your main source of income, you're worried. OK. But the charging charging protection order does that. Um, and then you can just go look that up to get more information on how this this works. All right. Anyway. Now, now that we've grown. We've grown significantly. And I, I got another video on 
like S corporations and K1s and how to pay yourself a salary. I do have another video on that. I did that like three months ago. So I have another video on that. Um, I got to, I'll add it in. You'll see the screenshot pop up. Okay. But anyway, so now we're here at the finished product now. And this is what it looks like. So let's, let me give you a brief, over, a brief overview. By this point, I'm going to just say each LLC is doing, let's just say on the low end, each LLC is doing $100,000 in profit a year. And that's a lot of profit for the publishing company. Maybe there's a lot of remixes going on. Okay. And, and so you want to separate that money. Okay. The record company is going to pay you a salary. The publishing company is going to pay you a salary. The touring company is going to pay you a salary, right? And the merchandise company is going to pay you a salary. And the endorsement company is going to pay you a salary. Your manager will get paid out of this. And then the rest of the profits will go up to the parent umbrella company. All right. And then they will get taxed. And you want to leave enough in here so that gets taxed. But you send some money up here and this get taxed. This gets taxed up here. So you can kind of you move your money around a little bit more fluently. Now, I know you all are going to have a lot of questions, but I try to make this as simple as possible because the bigger you get, please, please, please do not have everything in one LLC. It is not going to be beneficial to you. It is going to be quite dangerous to your financial structure and it might topple because of different investments, different disagreements. Somebody sues the merchandise company for false advertising because this they said, you said this is fuchsia and they said, no, that's magenta. I'm suing you. And I bought three shirts and they were vintage limited edition shirts and you lied. I'm suing you or something, right? Oh, you didn't post the brand in the right way. We asked you to, we're suing you. And you say no and you say, oh, we want to, and then now, you know, Keeping all of this stuff separate, having your money supply circle around and pay out the people it needs to pay. Okay. What do you do with this type of structure? This is the point where in that book, in my book, The Musician's Guide to Self-Publishing on MusicMoneyMakeover.com, this is when you attract investors because now you have the books, the profit and loss sheets to back it up. And they say, man, your music operation is doing really well. We would like to invest in you. And you can say, sure, I'm going to assure you that you're going to get your money back. How much do you want to invest, Mr. Investor? And, and what share of my company would you like? And how, how much money can you keep flowing in here? See, at this point, you become your own company. You don't, you, now you really don't need the record label. See, a lot of you all talk about, well, you don't need the record label. I got my distributor and blah, 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 and CD Baby and TuneCore like, yeah, well, you don't know, but we are we belong to the big three anyway. Okay? So technically you are signed, even though you're keeping a lot of your money, you're still paying the big boys. Okay? But now, even if you do use them as a distributor, who cares? But when you got all of this now, and this is all yours right here, and you take investment dollars because your business structure is set up the right way and people can invest in you and you can keep your operation going. Now you got the cycle and you just pumping it, pumping it out, sign a new artist to publishing and you got your touring agency and your merchandise and your brand. And you got it's just ticking, tick, 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 money, 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 money. All right. Because your investors are coming in and they are assured and insured a little bit that they're going to get their money back because you're making wise decisions with their money. So now the deals where it says, oh, such and such made $10 million deals, they made the deal this way. They didn't make the deal with this or this, possibly, but most of the time it's, an, it's a full parent company, umbrella company deal where someone invested $10 million and that money go went to pump into all of these other subsidiary LLCs, the baby, the baby ones, okay? That is how this works. So now, final verdict. It's going to take some hard work to make this happen, and it will take money, but it is possible. It is not easy. This is advanced, 
But I wanted to give you all something that was going to be a roadmap for your future and not just stiff you with the, oh, you make an LLC and you go make some money. Of course, we're going to make some money. Some of you are making money without LLCs. You're just making it on your Social Security money and you're paying 30 percent in taxes straight out the gate. Yeah, but eventually you're going to make too much money and you're going to be like, yo, I'm paying too much taxes. Let me figure out what I can do. So don't shortchange yourself. Stay focused. And I'm out of this thing. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching the show. Now, I got some free stuff. I got a free profit maximization checklist down below. I got a free split sheet down below in the description. All right, and if you want to visit musicmoneymakeover.com and check out the producer's contract course, you can do so right over there. All right, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe uh, to this channel because I'm giving away so much game, man. At least you can do me the favor of subscribing and then sharing to somebody or to your other or just film it and put it on Instagram or, or do whatever. You know what I mean? Share this stuff. Get it out there. Anyway, I'll see you all later. Peace. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the show. Log on to musicmoneymakeover.com forward slash shop to download all my books and free guides. And while you're there, click on the book a call tab to get a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me to get all your music business questions answered and solved. Thanks for watching.